Hello friends of the T-Worlds, turning back again with the third T-Worlds development episode. Um, we are staying in the server side today and I want to show you guys how to create a admin command or a recon command, so to say. Um, yes, so in case you don't know what those are, I will quickly uh, cover them in-game and show you what those commands actually are. And I expect you guys to know how to compile the T-World source code and how to open a text editor or have like VS Code or some similar program installed. Okay, so let's get started. Let's cd into the build directory and quickly build the thing. Um, your build press process might differ, especially if you're on Windows. Um, before you get into development or before you make some changes and it's a new day, usually it makes sense to check if the build still uh, succeeds. So then quickly start the server <coughs> and start the client as well. So, and then go to local again and connect to the server. And if we look into the server console, we have here, um, yeah, all the output from the server and what the <clears throat> what it does and load it and so on and interesting for us is this um, visually marked square here where it says recon password mark that and copy that um, Jesus and then go into your server uh, or into your client and press F1 to open the local console or F2 to open the remote console and there you can enter the password from the log and now you're authenticated as administrator as you can see my client highlights me in red now um, this might not be the case in your vanilla client or whatever um, but yeah just wanted to show that uh, so we are authenticated as, as administrator now <clears throat> and that means we have access to all the server configurations for example so we can set the map sv underscore map but those are not commands, those are configurations. They are slightly different than commands, but we are going to look into commands only in this episode. Uh, example for a command would be something like status, where you can see a list of all players and their ID, IP address, port, client uh, version number, and the in-game name score, and if they are authenticated or not. There's an admin or mod uh, in uh, parentheses afterwards. Okay, so, if we want to create our own command, um, I could just tell you where in which files to look, uh, but I want to show you how you can approach this. If you want to change something in the t source code and you have a possibility to get a string from, from in-game and um, just search that string in the t source, uh, source base, source code base, uh, what? Yeah, that might not be the right term. Uh, okay, so open the, the remote console again and press tab to autocomplete and go through all those commands. Um, a command that <coughs> makes uh, probably sense to search for is add vote, because if you start searching for something like status, there will be many places uh, in the code that include the, the string status, but something like add vote is most certainly only this command and only the thing we are searching for. So um, yeah, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, let's do it. Uh, open the source directory with uh, VS Code and now type in Control Shift F to find in all files. And then we can type in add vote. And here we can see our command and then we can uh, look through the code and see how it's done. And that's how you can copy existing code to um, add new things. That's a general way of doing it, um, not only for recon commands. Um, if we had done the same for, us, uh, let's say, status, there are many places in the source code where you have the string status. So try to find the most unique string in uh, whatever topic you are currently so at vote okay so mm, 
we can see the first um, occurrence is in game client components. Um, so this is the client sending the, the vote. We are not interested in that. Uh, we are interested in the server side because we want to implement the actual command. Um, and as you can see, we have this here. Okay, this is some magic. If we hover over it, we have this argument. I console f command call back. So a callback is like, is it a function pointer? I don't know. I I really suck at the details, but um, this thing is a function that gets called when you type in at vote. And we can control click this thing and see the function definition. So this is the actual implementation of at vote. And we can see it's prefixed with con. I guess that stands for console or something like that. Um, so we can safely assume that, yeah, con lock teams, con force team valent, that all um, admin commands follow this pattern and are prefixed with a con. Um, okay, so let's search for all occurrences of con at vote. Uh, not at underscore vote, but con at vote. So press uh, Control Shift F again and uh, search for that. And we can see we are <coughs> having our definition here that we found already. Then we have um, the, so to say, linkage or where it's registered uh, as the at underscore vote command. And then we have a header file here um, having the function signature. <laughs> I guess um, I'm I'm really not a professional developer and I might confuse some terms here. Um, so <clears throat> we did not really cover functions yet, but um, usually in C++ or in bigger projects <clears throat> where you have multiple source files, um, you have the header files and the C++ files and the header files only include the uh, function signature. Let's hope that this is the correct term for these things. So they do not have a function body. It's just like the parameters and uh, what type they return and so on. And those are needed for like including. And I will explain that in detail uh, later on, but just make sure that when you add a function uh, in a C++ file with a definition and so on, that you put it in the, um, yeah, header that belongs to it. So it's usually the same same name, but except there's a CPP, there's a dot H for header. Okay, so that's all we need as it seems. So there are um, three places where we have to um, edit something and then we can create our own command. Um, yeah, just wanted to let you guys know that there are more recon commands than those that are showing up here. And that's because some of them are in different files and not in gamecontext.cpp. For example, <clears throat> if we search for con status, um, we can see those are in engine server because they are closer to the engine and they want to access the thing like IP addresses. And I don't know, probably that's why somebody decided to put them here. Um, so you can put, uh, yeah, there's also kick, shutdown, lockout. Those are also um, registered in the in the server engine. Um, but we want to keep it high level. <laughs> I don't know if you can say it like that and stay in game context, <clears throat> which is my favorite uh, file to mess around with. It's probably not the best uh, coding style and. Usually, if you create your own modifications, you should create your own um, C++ classes and files. Um, <clears throat> but for a beginner who just wants to mess around, um, I recommend doing uh, changes in gamecontext.cpp for quick results. Okay, so let's get copying and just copy um, the existing code and try to adapt it. So we can create our own uh, command. So let's take at vote and press control C to copy that and 
put it in here. Okay. Uh, what command do we want? Let's call it. Um, let's call it something like stats. I hope that's not a command. I guess it's not, right? Yeah. Um, whoopsie. Uh, stats. So the second thing. So we have the first parameter being the name. That's pretty straightforward. And the second being the arguments or the parameters. And um, S stands for string. And in the square brackets afterwards, you have like the name of the string being the first argument a string with the name option and the second argument is r i don't know what exactly r stands for but it's a string without delimiters so um s is the matches the argument until a delimiter like a space for example so if you type in stats in the recon console, for example, stats foo var bass. Then s will match the first argument, so foo until a space. And r will continue from the matched argument, so it's bar, but it will ignore spaces, so it will match bar bass, right? Even if there's a space, it will match everything until the end. Um, those are usually handy for player names because player names can include um, spaces, in-game names. Um, and S is usually useful for fixed arguments that you defined for a command. And um, yeah, you can even specify like the values here, yes or no. Um, yeah, okay, and there's a third one, it's I. I assume it stands for integer. So this is a number. Um, it will, yeah, it will expect a number as a, as opposed to a string. Okay, and it's also delimited by spaces. Mm. And then there's the question mark. So if you do not provide a, okay, let's. You can also do that without names. I hope. Those names are kind of new. I, d I didn't look into. Um, the implementation details yes yet um, but uh, let's call it sample um, <laughs> nice uh, so if you now type in just stats in the recon console it will fail because there's a missing required argument sample um, but if you put a question mark in front of here it, um, it um, yeah, it makes it an optional argument. As you can see here, for set team, you have a required argument, the ID, and then followed by the team, and that's it. You can say set team zero zero, for example, um, and it works. But you can optionally provide a third argument being the delay, but it also works if you do not provide it. Um, okay, let's go with no argument <laughs> first uh, first of all maybe we will uh, provide argument later on and then we have our function here let's call it con stats that's not yet defined or implemented but we can write it already here it will throw a compiler warning uh, error um, but we are going to implement it later and then we have a description here um, yeah some cool stats function Oh, it's more like a command, right? Um, okay, so then open the search again and search for con at boat and go to the other places. So let's go to the header and copy that. Maybe put that, I don't know, somewhere. It's usually good style to exclude your changes from, from the current code. Maybe even uh, mark it with a comment, my changes. Um, so yeah, when updating the source code, it's not like all, you know, yeah, inter interjangled together. <laughs> That's not a word I know, uh, but you know what I mean. Um, it's good to extract your changes, but you can also put it in here if you want. Um, <clears throat> then we have con stats and these things are fine to stay. As you can see here, they are never changing. So it's usually 
a good practice if all the other code doesn't change then you should also adapt to that style um okay so we have that defined and then there's only the implementation missing um we can quickly copy that whole command and maybe go yeah to the oh, where do we put it maybe it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter where you put it um, but we can maybe put it at last command and mark it with my commands or whatever or my mod I don't know yeah so you can find it later on so all this implementation we can kick it out um, maybe maybe keep that one <laughs> so we delete that and we only keep the um, console print here um, and we say this is a stats command and then we want to make sure to rename that to constats and we do not need that oh okay so it can be that simple <laughs> We probably should have uh, copied a different command like convote and then just copy that. But um, yeah, that's fine. Is there some check that we want? No. Okay. So this is our simple constats command, and there's another way of printing things. Um, we already looked at uh, dpg message only for the server logs. Um, but there is also this console print um, with different output levels. Can we click? Yeah, control click here. Um, and then we can see the different output levels. Uh, standard, ad additional info, I don't know what's that, debug. Um, yeah, that's it. Those three output levels are there. Um, let's keep it standard. And then we have similar to the dbg message or the debug message, we have like a um, log type or log name and then the actual message. Um, okay, let's see if that compiles. As I said, I'm unprepared and I did not test anything of this. And it's looking okay so far. Oh, wonderful, it's built. Okay, now we can execute the server. Make sure to copy the recon password and client is still running. Then reconnect to the server and authenticate. So now we should have the command stats. And it prints, this is a stats command. Do you see it? Maybe it's a bit small. I don't know if I can zoom in here, not really. Yeah, so we can type in stats and it shows this awesome message. Um, cool. So this is a simple um, command we just created and now it's time to yeah, build upon that and extend it with some functionality. Um, for example, we have the arguments. Um, go to constats and give it the argument. A required argument R name. Okay, then we go to here again. <clears throat> and yeah, it's, there is this p result. I wonder. Ah, yeah, okay. p result is uh, given as a argument or a, a yeah, parameter to the function. It's given as an argument and it's a parameter. Oh my gosh, I, I should just stop using those words. Um, but you have this thing here pre-result and you can get um, a oh there's also floats I did not know that um, floats are like uh, numbers with decimals uh, I did not cover them in my variables thing so you have an integer foo you can also have a float foo so those are only like full numbers like actual numbers and those can have floating points um, like no <clears throat> okay yeah quick dive into floats <laughs> much raw explanation um, okay so get result and you can 
get the arguments you specified in the in the registration of the command so we wanted a string so string will um, match the r and the s um, parameter or yeah thingy um, oh we are directly here ah interesting um, get string and then we type in the string the index of the string we want if you hover over it we have the index if you can see it here it wants the index as an argument so we want the first string and starting from zero the first is number zero okay um let's quickly get a buffer again i covered that already so get a array of chars being a so to say string then to string format and um, a buff size of a buff and then the format pattern um, stats of player then we can put in here the string specifier and pre result get string zero okay so now we replace this with a buff and um, now we formatted this buffer um, i already covered that um, so that it shows the argument stats of player and then the argument we gave as, as first argument uh, i hope that makes sense um, let's see if it compiles and it does that's good then copy this thing and go to the client okay so if we now type in stats it says invalid arguments usage um, so that's what I meant previously if you have um, argument specified and it's no question mark so it's not an optional argument the command will actually not launch it will do nothing and say invalid arguments please type it correctly and then we type in stats foo and we can see stats of player foo because we use the argument in here as a string so if we type in stats foo bar that works as well and if we do a space that works as well because we used r not s um, if we had typed s instead of r here it will only show stats of player foo bar and then end no a d a w d all right okay so that's that's so much about the oh yeah there's something uh, interesting as well um, you can make this one optional and then we can count the number of given arguments so um, if p result num arguments so this will return the number of arguments starting from one so to say so if if you do not give any arguments um num arguments will be zero um yeah i, I sometimes confuse that because the first argument has the index zero um but uh, yeah so make sure that is uh, the way you expect it um usually so if we say if the number of arguments given is zero so no arguments given that is now possible because we made this optional with a question mark um, then we want to print a different message so oh yeah also something super interesting is if you press alt key the alt key on your keyboard and the up arrow you can move those lines and um, yeah then you can jump to the beginning of the line and indent it correctly okay so we want a different message here saying um yeah please provide a name or whatever um and then we want to return um returns in function um means oh i did not explain if statements after all oh jesus christ <laughs> um so a return in a function does um break the execution here so if there are zero arguments it will uh, print this message and if it sees return this code will never be executed it just breaks the the function um yeah and the if statement oh i did not explain if statements yeah uh, i should probably do an episode 
just about con uh, stuff like uh, if statements and loops and so on. But let's include it in here and make it a big episode. Um, so if statements, it's just plain English. So you have if and then a condition, condition. And if this condition is true, this code block will be executed. And if this condition is false, it won't be executed. So we can literally type in here true and this code will always be executed. So it's as if this if statement is not existent. And we could literally type in here false, which would be similar to commenting this code out because it would <clears throat> never be executed. And we can also put in uh, truthy and falsy statements in here. Um, Congrats uh, to my pronunciation over here. So we can put in one equals two, uh, two gg, one. <laughs> um, do not um, confuse that with a single um, equal sign because this is an assignment. So this will try to put the value one in the number one that does not work. So you want to compare it and comparison is with two equals, okay? So this will always execute, and if we um, use the two that I already mentioned, it will never execute because the one is never the same value as the two. Okay, um, yeah, and if we put in here our p result num arguments, which is a variable representing, it's not a variable, it's actually a function that returns a value, but you can see it as a variable-y thing. Um, so this will uh, be the value, uh, the number of arguments we have. And if the number of arguments equals zero, then execute this code, okay? Um, good, I hope that was, that was not too much information here. Um, and then return and um, yeah, this does not make a lot of sense because um, we could also just leave it non-optional and T world's magic would handle uh, the message saying uh, that the argument was uh, invalid. But sometimes you want to um, put a help text in here. Oh, let's do that. Um, this is a help text about the stats command. And then we can put more lines in here and say something like, it shows stats about things. Cool, huh? And we should maybe put a comma here. Okay. So if we compile that now and maybe I should provide, you can provide settings as, um, as argument to, to your t server. And so it will set the password to recon. It's like similar to a setting. Uh, in a config file in auto exec or something like that um, then I do not have to copy the recon password and just can type in recon okay cool so if we now type in stats it will show our help text this is a help text about the stats command it shows stats about things cool huh and if you type in stats foo it will uh, show stats of player foo so um, depending on the number of arguments we gave it it did different things and we can um, yeah also say if the number of arguments is greater than zero so also if we give multiple arguments um, or yeah, it's less than zero or was it, it that does not make too much sense but um, yeah um, those are possibilities okay um, oh yeah there's another thing I wanted to show you that is looping um on uh, on all currently connected players so um yeah i just explained for loops and if statements in one video i guess it will be the super huge uh long video i don't know how long we are recording already but uh let's get started there are four loops um so you can type in whoa what have i done um let's get some space here make it bigger uh, you can type in for int i equals zero less than max clients i plus plus. Okay, so this can look confusing if you see a for loop the first time. Those are 
yeah separated in three statements don't add those statements i don't know in three uh, parts you have a declaration of a variable here int i and assign it to the value zero so we have a variable with the value zero then you have a check so to say um, if the value is um, smaller than max clients if you can hover over it or press control whatever you can see that it is uh, 64 which is the default vanilla player limit um, so 64 clients could possibly connect to the server and as a third argument you have uh, like a running statement I don't know um, so this gets executed once and then um, every iteration you execute this and this so it will increment i then execute the whole code block here then check this condition and if this condition is true it will increment uh, i again and execute this whole code block and so on so if we would dbg underscore message uh, for loop it perfectly covers all my things and print the value of i here real quick. We can look at um, look at that real quick. If you type in stats, I we. How do I? Oh yeah. I did not, haha, it does not show up in uh, here. It shows up in the console, of course, because it's a debug message. And you can see here um, that I goes from 0 to 63. So 64 iterations starting from 0. Um, so this code, uh, this line of code gets executed 64 times. Um, and we can use that to, uh, yeah, for example, let's go like this and if p self, so p self is a pointer to game context. Um, we are actually not in the game context scope right now because it's a static function and yeah, just don't bother about it you need p self to access the game context so um and in game context you have this variable m a p players which is a array of pointers so a stands for array p stands for pointers i'm not going to explain pointers but they are like pointing to players and there if the player is not there they are pointing to invalid memory and we want to check that it's not invalid. So we need a check here. So if um, the player on, so this is an array, so we have the index i. So we are iterating over every player and we check if the player is existent. And so we can check if it's unequal to null, um, which is a null pointer usually in the newer C++, but uh, you can also just put a exclamation mark in here so it's false um, so if the player is not there we want to continue and then it will never execute this code um, if the player is not existent it will continue and skip uh, back to the top and start execution again from here um, if that makes sense okay so um, if the player is existent um, we want to show it here and we copy that code in here okay and stats of player and then we want to replace it with the argument let's quickly remove the argument our command probably has no arguments i just wanted to show that um stats of player and then we put in here p self again so we can access server and client name i already showed that of i so the current player who is existent so it will loop over all possible player slots 
and um, if the player is not online this will be null and then it will continue if the player is online or if a player with the id i is online um, then it will execute this code and say stats of player and then the name of the current player that we are looping over um, so if we go here and build this again then we should see our own name here type in recon and stats stats of player chair dragon <clears throat> so it iterated over all players on the server and it only found found one player that was me who is uh, connected and um, showed my name here so if i connect a dummy as well and then we have chair dragon and zilli dummy as we can see in the scoreboard and if we type in stats again or oh, maybe i should make some differentiation here stats again we have stats of player children and stats of player silly dummy you know um, so depending on the amount of connected players this will uh, adjust itself um, there is more about commands about recon commands um, but uh, I guess this episode was very long already maybe I will split it in two episodes let's see uh, I hope you learned something. I hope it was not too much input today and uh, we will see how this journey goes in the next episode. Bye.